This amazing video has been brought to you by Bleed, Steam, and Steel by Lars Jensen. This novel is packed full of romance, intrigue, violence, and steampunk goodness. And if you're looking for your new best girl, then look no further. If you're interested, please check out the link down below, and on with the video. Hi there everyone, Lars here from Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends, and what the heck even is steampunk? It's like this mystical thing that you see come out of the woodworks at comic conventions, and it stalks Whovians and Trekkies at Renaissance festivals, and provides excellent artwork out there on the interwebs. So what is steampunk? The most aggravating answer that most people will give you is, you'll know it when you see it. And yes, that answer is true, but it's aggravatingly vague for a concept that is in itself rather nebulous in nature. As writers who might want to create steampunk stories, this can make the task feel daunting and confusing. It's even an issue for many publishers who normally tend to shy away from steampunk stories. In fact, if you go looking on many publishing companies' websites, they don't even acknowledge steampunk and their editors won't even touch the genre. This is a big shame considering how popular steampunk is and how pervasive its aesthetic is in popular fiction and culture. So, in an attempt to make steampunk easier to understand and give you writers a leg up on this awesome but tricky concept, I will endeavor to make steampunk make sense. And if by chance there are any publishers watching this video, I hope that you take into account what I'm about to say, because steampunk is really really awesome and it deserves its day in the sun now i need to actually peg what steampunk is steampunk is both a genre and an aesthetic starting with the aesthetic steampunk has a very specific look to it that can easily get stories misconstrued as steampunk themselves but they're most assuredly not the steampunk aesthetic is the marriage of Victorian era sophistication and fashion with the boundless potential of industrial imagination. Now, you might already be asking yourself, Lars, what does that even mean? Well, that means that the world design, the fashion, the people's mannerisms, and the likes will clearly depict different kinds of class, perceived or codified gender roles, certain types of foods, and etc. But you will also see grandiose inventions, mind-boggling machines, amazing modes of transportation that recall the old age of exploration, and so forth. And usually it all implies a world that has either not yet discovered the uses of electricity or uses steam and other means to provide energy to their amazing machines. And the clothing is exaggerated to match the rise of industrialism and its boundless potential. The steampunk aesthetic can be way over the top, or it can be subtle, it can be dark and brooding, or it can be cheery and exciting, it can be all of these things and more! And this is already why publishers are hesitant to accept steampunk, because the appearance alone is so vast and so hard to identify with any one group of consumers, so they have no idea who to sell it to! Which is stupid in my opinion, because the lovers of steampunk eat, eat up all of these things, and normies love steampunk too! So it's really not hard to find a group to sell it to. Now, we can find the steampunk aesthetic in many different stories, from stuff like A Young Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, to Full Metal Alchemist, and to Attack on Titan, even Joss Whedon's Firefly. Now, the first two examples I gave rely on a lot of cool-looking machinery and its old tech doing incredible stuff, whereas Attack on Titan employs all kinds of gadgets and costumes that fit really well in with the steampunk setting, and both anime and manga that I've mentioned are grounded in dark fantasy, and Firefly is firmly a science fiction even though many of the settings out on the outer planets and the people's fashion and everything like that really fit in well with the steampunk aesthetic. However, None of these stories are actually steampunk. A Young Connecticut Yankee is fantasy and historical fiction. Attack on Titan is dark fantasy. Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood are very firmly fantasy. And Joss Whedon's Firefly is science fiction, and yet they all employ the same steampunk aesthetic throughout their stories. But their stories are definitely not steampunk. 
Am I confusing you yet? <laughs> Don't worry. I'm just right now getting the surface level stuff out of the way, which is the aesthetic. And that's because the steampunk aesthetic is just so eye grabbing that it's usually what dominates what people think of when it comes to the genre. But that's not really what the steampunk genre is because anyone can just dress up in steampunk attire. Anyone can draw or paint these amazing steampunk images and anyone can stuff steampunk into their movies, books, comics, etc. But that's not really what the genre is. In order to fully understand the genre of steampunk, we need to go back in time to Jules Verne. Because long before Tolkien brought together myths and folklore to create modern fantasy, or even before science fiction came into being and Lovecraftian horror and sword and sorcery, the French writer and playwright Jules Verne brought to life adventure. Jules Verne lived in the 1800s, during a time of fantastic changes. New technologies were being developed left and right, leading to all new possibilities people had never dreamed of before. These technologies made the empires of Europe exceedingly rich and prompted them to go on a new wave of colonial conquest. This went hand in hand with an era of exploration and discovery. The world wasn't getting smaller, it was just being revealed in all its grandeur and complexity. All of these adventures, riches, technology, and learning transformed many social norms and highlighted class divisions. It also crashed against the rigidity of Victorian ideals, which dominated across Western culture because the British were so powerful and Queen Victoria skewed all standards and was easily then promoted as the norm, which is insane because this woman was insane. In any case, before I get off on some weird historical tangent, all of this finds its way into his landmark works. So Jules Verne wrote Journey to the Center of the Earth, All Around the World in 80 Days and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and all of these changes that were happening around in his world went into his books. And what this all did was that it captured the spirit and the energy and the times of adventure, thus birthing the adventure genre. Now, the genre today is largely appropriated by fantasy, science fiction, and especially historical fiction. It still exists by itself in some cases, but because these other and more popular genres such as fantasy and science fiction have laid claim to the same territory, adventure easily comes across alone as an antiquated form of storytelling. But a lot of that spirit of adventure and an age of discovery and the clash of tradition and progress are still embodied in steampunk. In many ways, steampunk is the grandchild to adventure. So let's talk about steampunk on its own as a genre and not as an aesthetic. Because steampunk is inextricably linked to adventure, the genre itself must be adventurous. It is reflected in not just the aesthetic, but in the boundaries that are pushed in steampunk stories. The bounds of science and understanding are pushed and even broken. The rigidity of society is pushed, and the distant unknown horizons of the world are explored. This is the key to steampunk. It must have a sense of adventure for it to succeed. The steampunk genre also concerns itself with matters of inventions and the consequences of exploration and discovery, class distinctions, the clashes of culture, and discovering where the inquisitive and adventurous soul belongs in society. A steampunk story doesn't have to hit on all of these things, but if it doesn't hit on some of them, it just is another story wearing the attire of a steampunk cosplayer, or maybe it's on sale at the spirit of Halloween. And in many ways, this is why the genre is so confusing. The trappings are easy to create, but writing in a vein similar to a genre that went out of style after Lord of the Rings is now what most writers are not geared up to do. It requires concentration and to stay true to the elements of adventure. A series that does the steampunk genre very, very well is Wax and Wayne by Brandon Sanderson. Even though it is a fantasy series, we have to acknowledge that steam power technology and a Victorian era society and Sherlock-like adventures abound within its pages. 
but it also has all of the elements that make really what a steampunk story should be. For instance, pushing the boundaries of societal norms is Wayne, and Wax is navigating an arranged marriage. So there we have class distinction and society. We also have pushing the boundaries of technology, and the crimes that Wax investigates defy the imagination of what technology and magic are able to do. And the story pushes the boundaries of how big the world of Scadrail really is by introducing new peoples and cultures and their technologies. So seriously, it is a phenomenal series that perfectly blends the Wild West gunslingers with Sherlock Holmes all wrapped up in a steampunk adventure and magic. And yes, that does sound like a lot, but it works. Steampunk is a very loose genre despite having specifics that must be met. It can incorporate almost anything because like the adventure genre before it, it pushes the bounds of what the reader thinks is possible because adventure explores the limits of what is possible. Another fun steampunk story is The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And yes, I know that that movie wasn't very well accepted by a whole lot of people, but when you look at it right here, you have all of the steampunk aesthetic as well as all the steampunk inventions, but really what you have right here is you have the world changing. People thinking that the world is getting smaller and so forth, that adventure is gone, that Africa is maybe one of the last holdouts to this. And yet, as the villains descend upon the world with this new technology that no one understands, all new possibilities are opened up. And so in order to preserve an older world, the heroes must go to the edges of the earth on this grand adventure to stop the villains and explore the boundaries of magic and technology and themselves. And that is what makes it actually a very good steampunk story. And another great steampunk story that I cannot forget is Helsing with Hugh Jackman. Yes, this is a steampunk story. And in this case, we have horror being appropriated by steampunk in order to tell a really crazy story of Van Helsing going to the edges of civilization with technology to encounter magic. And we have this brilliant dichotomy right here of the bounds of magic and the bounds of technology clashing and also what are the bounds of the human soul this is a fantastic adventure story that really is steampunk when you dive down deep because of the technology that's being explored the magic that's being explored and the boundaries of the human soul that are being explored within helsing Sure, it's a really cheesy, fun ride, the same as the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but that's kind of what you sign up for when it comes to steampunk, because really all realistic bounds are gone. Why? Because we're pushing the boundaries. And not to toot my own horn too much, but my newest novel, Bleed Steam and Steel, accomplishes much of this as well. The main character, Asuka, must breach traditional norms to save her family from dishonor and destitution, engaging in high-stake duels with her steam-powered warsuit. This eventually leads her to undertake a crazy journey to fulfill her quest to save her family. And all the other characters go on their own journeys, pushing the boundaries of faith, society, technology, and warfare to complete their own personal arcs. The steampunk aesthetic is fun to write and create, but it's even more fulfilling to go on those adventures with your characters and seek the unknown. Well, like I said at the beginning, you know steampunk when you see it. The aesthetic is so popular and so strong that it's all over the place. But if you want to embrace the real spirit of the genre, then you must go back in time and make your story truly adventurous. Hopefully that clears things up for you. And tell other steampunk fans, cluster in the comments and correct me because <laughs> once again, steampunk, it, you know it when you see it and everyone's got their own opinions of it. So that being said, if you're looking for more writing advice, please check out our podcast, Camille's Harem, and our other videos out here on YouTube. We also have writing exercises at our Pinterest page, and we would love for you to join our community. Links for all of those things are down in the description below. Thank you for joining us on this adventure that we call writing, and until the next video, y'all, tschüss.